saw you for the first time, first time. My knees began to quiver, quiver. And I got a funny feeling, feeling. In my kidneys and my liver. Digestive system, baby. My hands they started shaking, shaking. And my heart began to thump. Is that a cigarette you're smoking? It's gonna wrench my heart from its sockets to do so, Lister. But I've forgotten my notebook, so I can't. <laughs> uh, I don't believe I'm running away from a psychopathic curry man! <laughs> smell any smell. Camphor wood. <laughs> My H has just fallen off. <laughs> Personally, I don't intend to spend my retirement years sitting in a high chair, glooping apricot dessert and... And I think she fancies you. And what does that prove? She's not blind. Hey, baby, I'm a little bitty. I'm a little bitty. I'm a little bitty. It's a little bitty. I'm a little bitty. Welcome once again to a brand new Smegouts tape. Coming up, great handfuls of fresh Smegups, mainly from the first three series of Red Dwarf, some snippets from the recent Red Dwarf convention, the ten more most asked questions about the series, a competition where you can win a night out on the town with Spearhead 3, and perhaps... What's that you say? You can win a who in a competition? And for the first time ever, the complete, uncut version of the original tongue-tied song from Parallel Universe. Yay! Cheese Morden! I'm talking to you! You're giving away what in a competition? We'll talk about it later. No, we'll talk about it now! I'm not being a prize in a competition. I've got droid rot! I'm out fraggled with silicon wickets! I should be in a hole being fed custard through a straw. Oh. So, let's start by oh. going right back to the beginning. Oh. Oh. Some smeg outs from the very first oh. Red Dwarf. Oh. an SOS distress call from the mining ship Red Dwarf. The crew are dead, killed by a radiation leak. The only survivors were Dave Lister, who was in suspended animation during the disaster, and his pregnant cat who was safely sealed in the hold. Revived three million years later, Lister's only companions are a life form. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not usually rude. I was in love once. Sinclair, you... Uh, oh, <laughs> no, no. Perhaps the most... <laughs> Am I fully restored? <laughs> Over the millennia, we've had a lot of problems with animals. We've had chickens that wouldn't fly, rabbits that wouldn't hop. Thank heavens we never actually hired that constipated elephant. Remember Mr. Lister's pet cat? Take a look at this. Ah, oh, come on, Frankie. Oh, come on, Frankenstein. Of 
Of course, in some ways, animals can be more reliable and better behaved than their static cousins, inanimate objects. It's incredible! I can feel, I can touch, I'm alive! I can fondle, I can fiddle! I am alive! <laughs> You know who he married? Who? Oh, my braces have just bust. <laughs> Well, we've looked at animals and machines. Now it's time to bring on the humanoids. I could never invent a sandwich like this, Lister. You see, all the ingredients are wrong. The fried eggs are wrong. The chitney chitney? Who is it now? It's gone back down to the cargo bays, sleeping off a four-course meal of fear, ven... Mm. <laughs> and dyslexia. <laughs> turned into a sort of splodgy, squelchy thing and squidged off down the corridor. <laughs> what is it? Some some sort of... Maybe that's because you used to be Alexander the Great's chief eunuch. What are you doing? There's nothing off Lester Burton. Nothing else Lester Burton. <laughs> this man can talk, you know what I mean? <laughs> How is it possible to get two babies without a woman on board? And you said... <laughs> okay, let's meet the crew individually. First, Mr. Rimmer, who in layman's terms in this next section engages in failing to articulate the predetermined sequential order of previously absorbed notations from an earlier inbuilt set of clearly defined collection of verbalizations. Or, as Mr. Lister would say, he shags it up good and proper. You wanted to play the field? That's right. I told her I wanted to play the field. I told her that. I must have been mad. She thought I was great and she was great. What? No, that's wrong. <laughs> that's right. I told her I wanted to play the field. I must have been mad. <sighs> Sorry. <I've... laughs> that's right. I told her I wanted to play the field. I must have been mad. She was great and I thought she was great. That's right. I told her I wanted to play the field. I told her that. I must have been mad. She thought I was great and... Oh no, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Next we have the ship's original onboard computer, Holly. Another ship? Brilliant. So it's not aliens then? No, they're from Earth. Hope they got some spare odds and sods on board. We're a bit short on a few supplies. Like what? So it's not aliens then? No, they're from Earth. I hope they got some spare odds and sods on board. We're a bit fewer. <laughs> so it's not aliens then? No, they're from Earth. And now Mr. Cat. Someone who Mr. Lister once said has the body of a cat with the memory of a goldfish. As I'm not fitted with bitch mode, I don't really understand that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm back. Feeling... How am I looking? Ah, right. <laughs> Look, just conserve your energy. Stan and Ollie will be back soon with the supplies. Meanwhile, let's just get some... Look, just conserve your energy. One more time. Look, just conserve your energy. Stan... <laughs> Look, just conserve your energy. Stan and Ollie will be back... <laughs> Look, just conserve your energy. Stan and Ollie will be back soon with the supplies. Meanwhile, let's just get some rest. <laughs> Look, conserve your energy. Stan and Ollie will be... <sighs> conserve your energy. Stan and Ollie will soon be back with the supplies. Meanwhile, let's just... Con <laughs> 
And now, Mr. Lister. In this next section, he was called on to play golf like a professional. Mr. Lister informed us all he could play golf quite superbly, so his stunt double wouldn't be required. Hmm. Okay, cameraman, this is going to be as quick as a flash. I hope you're on your case, my man. I hope you're on your case. Come, let's get this one out. Freeze. Now, you'll notice Mr. Lister has adopted an unusual posture known in pro-golfing circles as the French lavatory squat. Note the rakish angle of the golf club, or stick as he preferred to call it. Now, let's watch that swing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it now. Quite extraordinary. <laughs> What's going on, Crichton? Uh, 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 yeah. <clears throat> uh, that concludes the video log of the ship's inventory. Report ends. What's going on? Oh, I'm just downloading some spare part retrieval memo report invoice balance statements. <clears throat> you wouldn't be putting together a new smeg ups tape by any chance. Well, maybe. Uh. Just don't include that golfing sequence, okay? Is the angle it's shot from? Makes me look like I can't play. Oh, rest assured, sir, that unfortunate sequence remains our secret. All right, all right. What's next? What's next? Sir? Next clip, ma'am. Is it the one with you forgetting your lines and having them typed on the back of the cat set? <laughs> or is it the one where you forgot your lines? I'm about to have a skywriter scrawl them in blue smoke over the horizon. <laughs> the next clip is rather unpleasant for you, sir. I've titled it Suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I <beat> ya. <laughs> Lister, sir! <laughs> Brings it all back, man. I know, sir. It must have been terrible. You have to suffer for your art, Crichton. Right. And that's what we're making, mate. We're making art. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, man. Sorry. Uh, bless you, sir. Anyway, this breakfast's really hot, mate. Gonna go and get a lager. Mm. Cool down me biryani. Thank you for sharing that moment with us, sir. Most welcome. <clears throat> ah, now, where were we? Ah, yes. It's a peculiar thing, but sometimes keeping a serious expression in a scene induces abdominal spasms known to humanoids as laughter. Observe. Uh, Lister, is that a cigarette you're smoking? No, it's a chicken. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Is that all she says? Just that he passed away peacefully in his jeep? <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> well, I can't sit around here all day. I've got to get the smeg hammer out and loosen my sister's <laughs> under her, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go.
got to get out the smeg hammer and loosen <laughs> and loosen Mr. Lister's underwear. Well, I can't sit around here all day. I've got to get the smeg hammer. <laughs> Is it? Wait a minute. I've got to get out the smeg hammer. Sorry, I'm not reading right. <laughs> got to get over. The I don't want to come there. It's You're not right. funny at all. It's puerile and stupid and very immature. <laughs> Well, I can't sit around here all day. I've got to get out the smeg hammer and listen. <laughs> I can't believe it. I haven't done this for so long. He told me that in a previous incarnation, I was Alexander the Great's <laughs> chief eunuch. Some of you may remember in the last Smeg Ups tape, we ran a section where I answered the 10 most asked questions about Red Dwarf. Well, since then, thousands of you, well, maybe not thousands, hundreds of you, all right, four of you have written in pleading with us, well, maybe not pleading, asking us matter-of-factly whether we are going to run another 10 most asked questions section. So for those people, here are 10 more most asked questions about Red Dwarf. Here we go. Now, like last time, I have to stress I've had absolutely no time to prepare any smarty pant replies. Okay, the tenth most asked question about Red Dwarf is, in future echoes, Holly tells Lister that he has had conversations with Rimmer totaling 14 million words. Seeing Lister had been on the ship for just two years, this would mean they would have to speak 13 words per minute for every single minute of every day and night. How is this possible? Uh, let's start with an easier one, shall we? The ninth most asked question. In Thanks for the Memory, Lister is in the sleeping quarters, which, as everyone remembers, is level 348, and says to Rimmer that he went down to the hologram simulation suite, which, if you remember, is level 592. Surely Lister should have said, I went up to the hologram simulation suite. Well, obviously, the ship was flying upside down at the time. The eighth most asked question. In DNA, Crichton says Rimmer failed his astro-navigation test 13 times, and yet in the fourth episode of series one, Waiting for God, Rimmer says he failed his engineering exam 11 times, and in episode two of series one, Future Echoes, Rimmer said he failed his astro-navigation exam nine times. Why is this? Well, because he couldn't count, dummy. Why do you think he kept failing his exam? <clears throat> The seventh most asked question. In the episode Backwards, what did the nightclub owner really say? Let's take a look. Rimmer, we don't belong here. This place is crazy. Crazy? Death, disease, famine. There's none of that here. There's no crime. The first night we were here, a mugger jumped us and forced 50 pounds into my wallet at night point. <laughs> Okay, okay, but, but look at the flip side of the coin. It's not all good. Take someone like, say, St. Francis of Assisi. In this universe, it's the petty-minded little sadist that goes around maiming small animals. <laughs> or Santa Claus? What a bastard! Okay. It's the big fat git who sneaks down chimneys and steals all the kids' favourite toys. What fight? We didn't start any fight. What's he saying? I hear hell gas sword metal gas march about with the echo of his enemy. You know, it's what you say. The door I get the hot to his mac and the arch now when the search them all. Ring his search this at on the ring in the no more ring and it's no more. Now, take a look at this. You are a stupid, square-ended, bald git, aren't you? I'm pointing at you, I'm pointing at you. But I'm not actually addressing you. I'm addressing the one prat in the country who's bothered to get hold of this recording, turn it round and actually work out the rubbish that I'm saying. What a poor, sad life he's got! Yes, he's the... Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> Frankly, your axe crap. Anyway, anybody could have done it. I hate a lot of you. Bollocks to you! <laughs> Next question, the sixth most asked question about Red Dwarf. Throughout the first series, people who speak Esperanto are referred to as Esperantinos, and yet everyone knows the collective name of people who speak Esperanto are Esperantists. Can you explain? <clears throat> the fifth most asked question about Red Dwarf is, so stupid. 
The fourth most asked question. In show one of series two, Lister says to Rimmer, you are beginning to sound like my mum. And yet Lister claims to be an orphan, abandoned at birth. Does this mean that Lister is accusing Rimmer of sounding like someone who abandons people at birth? And if so, what sort of sound does this kind of person make? Ever had a girlfriend? Mr. Dennis W. McGuigan? Ever kissed someone of the opposite sex? Something tells me you're spending too much time in your room. Wipe the drool off your Pamela Anderson poster, put on a clean anorak, and get out there and meet some women. The third most asked question. In Marooned, Lister sits in front of the fire, ripping out pages of the book Lolita and throwing them onto the fire. Rimmer tells him to keep page 61. Lister then tears out the left-hand page and keeps it. This means he was keeping page 60 because the left-hand page would have been even numbers. Why did he do this? Well, we'll ask him, shall we? I don't see why I should have to take the rap for all this. If you sit down there, you look at the screen, and you answer the question. Why did you tear out the left-hand side page and not the right-hand side page? Hey, have you got an explanation? No, you haven't, have you? When? When, when you were marooned, when you were reading the Lolita book? Oh, yeah. I had the book upside down, so, so although it looked like it was the left-hand page I was tearing out, it was actually the, the, the right-hand page. Oh, I see. Oh, well, thank you. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Anything else? No, that's fine. That's all. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, that's Play with your toys. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Moving on. The second most asked question about Red Dwarf is, where do I write to get Red Dwarf merchandising and what is for sale? The website is www.reddwarf.co.uk. Here you'll find information on all the latest merchandise, as well as links to retail outlets. The Red Dwarf novels are available from all good bookshops. And most really bad bookshops, too. And now, the most asked question about Red Dwarf. In episode four of series two, why does Crichton say all human cells have DNA, which is not true? Mature red blood cells in adult humans are hemoglobin-filled disc-shaped bags lacking their DNA organelles. I said it because I'm just a surface mechanoid trained to clean lavatories. The exact content of human cells was something they obviously omitted to teach us at toilet university. Okay! Skipper, I've decided I'm not going to stay. Why? Him and me, it would... <coughs> Bit of robo phlegm for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just need to override the charred relays. Just need to override the charred relays. But how'd you do that hole? But how'd you do that hole? Bypass the main circuit. That ring of switches over there. <coughs> Fluffs. Go, Crichton. We found something, sir. Yeah? I think it's one of the crew. A hideously malformed, triple-headed skeleton with putrefied flesh hanging from it. It fell through Rimmer as we opened the lift door. <laughs> Is he all right? I believe he's just discovered what shirt tails a forcer. <laughs> all right, Crichton, you'd have to tell the f***. I don't even reading it, sir. <laughs> 700 hours tomorrow morning, uh, my automatic. Sorry. My, auto my automatic. I'm sorry. I mean, look at you, Lister. Where's your hole reinforcers? Where's your coloring pencils? Oh. We can't stay. Look, I'm 25 now. In 10 years' time, I'll be 15. I'll have to go through puberty again. Backwards. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh. What are you doing to me, lying guy? <laughs> hungry for fame, hungry for fame. Competition time. I will not be a prize. You shut up. You can't just give me away. I'm blood. I'm family. Shut up. 
and I will not end up like a naughty bloody dog in the back shelf of someone's car. Have you got that, you great Jesse? You're going to be a prize, like it or lump it. Well, <clears throat> I believe in aliens, Lister. Oh, right, fine. Something sensible at last. <laughs> aliens, Lister, with technology so far in advance of our own, we can't even begin to imagine. I mean, that's, 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 that, 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 that's, <laughs> Under the influence of this psychedelic breakfast, he went on to attack two senior officers, believing them to be giraffes who were armed and dangerous. You better have a good reason for this, Rimmer, uh, Lister. Uh, blew that. <laughs> but who cares? Let's soldier on. You don't know what love is. Oh, yes, I do, Lister. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Machines do not have souls. Computers and calculators don't have an afterlife. You don't get, like, little hair dryers with little wings playing little harps on little clouds. Oh, God, I f***ed it up! What are you on about? It's good to know it's not just the crew who mess up during the recording of a show. Some of our special guests are known to do wonderful smacks, as we shall see. Stubbleness, suppleness, sloppiness, slobby, 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 slobbiness, slobbiness, for God's sake, whatever that may mean, slobbiness. All these years I kept the faith. I wore the holy custard stain and the, and the sacred gravy mark. I renounced coolness and chose the righteous path of stubbleness. <laughs> Incredible career by Admiral A.J. Rimmer. I've read it 18 times, sir. What's your name, you little pipsqueak? Uh, Rathbone, sir. Admiral. A.J. Rimmer. There you go, Milano. Thank you. Gosh, I'll be the envy of the Academy. You, you certainly will, you little git. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for Madame Lobster a la Grec. For Sir, a sausage and onion. <laughs> no video would be complete without unseen footage. Cut from Series 3, this next section shows a game of strip poker played by myself, Mr. Cat, and Mr. Lister. Harmless enough, you might think but I am losing rather badly. Okay, the five card draw, juices are wild, and I'm in. One shoe. Me too, one necktie. Well, this isn't really fair. I'm a mechanoid, I don't have as many clothes as you. Hey, if you can't stand the heat, vacate the cooking area, in or out. Okay, I'm in. One head. Okay, I'll raise you. You're gonna bet your boxer shorts? One gold cap. It counts. I'm wearing it, so it counts. One handkerchief. Silk. Hand-stitched. What about you, Crichton? You're not out. I've forgotten what my cards are. All oh, right. Okay, I'll throw my hand in. All right, Groovers? What's shaking? Just hanging, blood. Just hanging. I had a message to give you. Oh, you've made me forget it now. What was it? It's gone clean right out of my head. It came in right, stayed there for a little while, then went straight out again. Was it important? It was quite, yeah. Never mind, change the subject, it'll come back to me. OK, so whose bet is it? Still yours. Got it! I remember what it was now. Abandoned ship! That's what it was. You're all in mortal danger. Abandoned ship! I knew it'd come back to me. Most humiliating. Now, let's pop over to the Red Dwarf Convention for a report from our team on the scene.
annoying are those locks to wear? I, I, I kind of got quite used to them now. What are they made of? Them? Hair. <laughs> you want a poem? Oh, eh. About Swindon. You want a poem? Okay. I knew this kid at school by the name of George McGee. He was always passing wind and blaming it on me. He'd hit me in the classroom and he'd hit me in PE. He'd wait for me to get the ball when we were playing in the gym. Then he'd push me over or kick me in the shin. He was that sort of kid, the sort of kid who cheats at conquers. Wasn't totally his fault though, his family were bonkers. His dad did his own work once, made me a jealous sight. That is until he got his book back and found out it wasn't right. But he was that sort of kid. The sort of kid who washes hamsters in Vim. The doctors took him away and did some tests on him. I hadn't seen him from that to this until, despite my pleading, the little sneak on Tuesday week, he pulled me up for speeding. <laughs> Survive from his computer rashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you, is it? <laughs> Come down here, let me have a look at you. <laughs> this was a bit of a smart ass question, wasn't it, Mr? <laughs> what was that? Has Holly survived yes. his computer rashes? He's been putting ointment on it, I think. <laughs> um, a kind of lanolin-based ointment <laughs> that you rub in and, and, and it makes it makes it all right. Where are you from? England. You're from England. <laughs> How would you say you're most like Lister? Like how, how, how am I most like him? The, I mean, I think uh, the characters are very much kind of caricatures of uh, of ourselves, really, you know? I mean, the sort of, you know, you take all the kind of weird little idiosyncrasies that everyone has and you kind of make them make them bigger. Uh, you know, Robert is very, like, Crichton in, in lots of ways. Danny's definitely like the cat in a lot of ways. I mean, Danny's got more clothes than anyone I know. <laughs> Danny John Jules could change his clothes every four seconds for a year and he still wouldn't run out of clothes. Did you enjoy doing Tongue Tied with Danny and the others? Tongue Tied? Oh no, it was a nightmare from start to finish. I'm not a synchronised dancer. <laughs> I had a pair of white high heel boots on. I looked like Diana Ross. <laughs> Honestly, it was a nightmare getting there. I thought, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And we had to go and sing back in vocals and all this kind of stuff. And Danny's got a brilliant voice, but he sings in a key that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> now, for the first time ever on this video, the complete Smegmix multimedia version of Tongue Tied. Shaking, shaking, and my heart began to thump. Oh, 
understand me when I say Kadabble, diggle, doggle, niggle, poggle, nibble, nay I'm trying to say Meanwhile, back at the convention... Yeah, I've got a dog called Poppy. You know, you know the Cavalier King Charles, the bulging eyes, you know, without you even having to give him a squeeze. You know? <laughs> and the dog... <laughs> Coming up to you like that, I can't do the bulging eyes, you know. Coming up, doing all this, very excited, they're a very lovely dog, they give a lot of affection, they're, they're lovely dogs, you know, but she just frustrates me because I just think, what the hell do you want, Poppy? What do you want? If she could just come up and speak, you know, and just say, Norm, check this out. You know. Can you put my Marty Feldman video on for me? Um, and when you've done that, can you change the water in my bowl because there's a bit of dust on the surface? I, I don't like that, Norm. And don't just run the tap. Don't give me the first couple of feet. I want the stuff that's a mile away. You know. Uh, when you've done that, Norm, take me for a walk round the block. I just want to do a wee, a poo. <laughs> and Norm, when I'm doing a poo, don't stare at me. <laughs> and also then she'll get back, get back, and she'll invariably do that surfing across the carpet <laughs> on her bottom with the front paws. I mean, I, I was around somebody's house, his dog did that once, and I, I just thought, I thought, that is so funny, that dog is fun. Look at it, it's, go it's going along like his ears are going back. It, going quite fast, you know, across the carpet, corner to corner, you know. I thought, that is funny. And then I discovered what the hell the dog was doing. And it's wiping its bottom on your carpet. Corner to corner for the longest wipe possible. I mean, isn't that disgusting? If a member of your family did that, I mean... You'd never speak to them again, would you? And now, the most popular scene in Red Dwarf ever. We asked the fans which was their favorite scene, and the winner by over half the votes was this. Enjoying your meal, sir? It's delicious, Crichton. Geese, Meg, and Lissis. <laughs> it's my own recipe, you know. Shami kebab diablo. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. It's like eating molten lava. I'm going for Peterson once, you know. He was in sick bay for a week. What a week. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> You seriously like them that much? He's trying to kill me! Oh, it's a good one, huh? <laughs> it went under here, I can see it! You all right, sir? Smack, it's gone. What? How could that be? Where could it go? We better get out of here, Craig. Something very weird is going on. Something very, very. shocked. <laughs> You'll bonk anything, won't you, Lister? Right in the boxes. Where are they? I threw them over here. You sure? Yeah, there's nothing here. Just mm -hmm. the blanket and, and the pillows and the snake. Snake? Snake! <laughs> what the snake is going on? I hate snakes. They freak me out. Totally snakes. They are my all-time second worst fear guy. What's your first? This 
<laughs> and this is how we achieved that amazing special effect. Let's catch up with the Red Dwarf Convention. Just believe you'll ever get to Silicon Heaven, and if you do, what do you think you'll find there? Oh, it'll be like a sort of Dixon's. <laughs> <laughs> a Dixon's showroom on a sunny day. <laughs> Going on forever. A Dixon's superstore. Imagine that. <laughs> Did you enjoy your experiences in America? In the American uh, pilot? Yes. <laughs> I had a different mask on then in those days, uh, with a different mouth, which meant I could eat humanoid food is an extraordinary experience. And in America, they give you a lot of food on a big table. It goes on forever. And it's called craft services, and there's lots of men who come and replenish your Danish pastries and your nuts and your coke. And you just st spend all day eating. And then they say, would you mind coming to say a lie? And you say, well, I'll just finish this croissant. <laughs> and I'll just maybe take a shower, and then I'll uh, talk to one of my many agents. And then I'll wander over in my limousine. Ah to the studio and uh, say one line, and then I'll go home. And for that, I'm paid $43,000. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed it. <laughs> one week. One week. Marvelous. How do you remember Space Corps directive numbers? Uh, they're written up on very large pieces of card for me. <laughs> do either of you have a favorite episode from Red Dwarf? Or a scene? I, I like that scene with you. This, yeah, the, the, uh, when Lister's underpants were shrinking. <laughs> It was an extraordinary moment for both of us. And there was another moment when we were riding four horses in, uh, oh, in Gunman of the Apocalypse. Tell that story, because you make me sound like a right git. <laughs> <laughs> Gunman of the Apocalypse. It's a rainy day near Brands Hatch in Kent. Four men sit on four horses. Two of those men, Danny John Jules and Mr. Llewellyn, have ridden horses before. Due to their experience with riding horses, they know that they are capable of riding. They are also aware of the dangers. Mr. Christopher Barry has never ridden a horse before. It has no steering wheel. <laughs> it's not fitted with a, an, an aspirated V8 engine, which is the sort of thing he's used to. <clears throat> Mr. Charles has never ridden a horse before. Mr. Charles has no fear. <laughs> I will now do a very poor impersonation of Mr. Charles on a horse. Hey, let's hit it and see what happens. <laughs> This next section is all about fluffs, and not to be confused with other sections about fluffs. There is a subtle difference, being mainly that you've already seen the previous fluffs and you haven't seen these. Look, astronauts in the olden days used to drink it all the time. You'll get used to it. Just, just pretend it's scrumpy. <laughs> Why can't I drink the snow? Because the spectro scan says it's 98% water. No, it doesn't, so it's not. <laughs> very prim, very proper, almost austere. Some people took her for aloof, thought she was... Thought she was... I don't know, really. Lying's <laughs> a vital part of your psychological defence system. Without it, you're naked. If you can't lie, then you can't... <sighs> Look, I've been thinking. No, I haven't. <laughs> How ker splat gunyar die in bed you Trojan pig dogs splash kaboom? Well, I see they uh, remain absolutely. Uh, okay. Ready? Stop on. She loves me. <laughs> A crew of the caliber of Red Dwarf will never waste time messing about. There's simply too much to do. It's a question of get the job done and on to the next. Here are some fine examples of four beings operating as one well-oiled machine. Lister, it's gonna rip my heart from its socket to do this, but I'm gonna have to report you twice in as many minutes. It's <laughs> running on to shop 25. <laughs> You left it, you left it underneath the chicken soup because it's coming to position for the She's right. The engine's core is about to melt down. We we get less than 10, 15. Oh. We've, we've, got, got, we've got less than 15 to get out of here. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, no clip, right? And this is the time when we're really struggling between the two. Yep. Who's the most unpopular man at the Bruce and Munch and Gladbach match? The man who shouts, give us a B! <laughs> What am I going to do? Don't look at us. <laughs> I took him to court. Got paid maintenance until I reached him. <laughs> well, that's it. So until next time, thanks for watching, and here's some final clips to go out on. Right, 0700. Time for his astro navigation revision. I'd better Should wake I him up. Facing that way, I'm supposed to be facing that way. <laughs> this is what you call a comedy hat. <clears throat> I didn't want to be a comedian. I always wanted to be a politician. But I thought if I was a politician, <laughs> you are a total, total. A word has yet to be invented to describe how totally whatever it is you are. But you are one, and a total, total one at that. All right, keep your hair on. I'm lucky if I have it a post post. Oh, you know what? You're a bit of a slob, Lister, you know, but when it comes down to it, you keep your word. This time I'm going to believe you. Let's go for another drink. Super. <laughs>